modified Atwood machine is an Atwood machine with a pulley. Remember, an Atwood machine has a pulley and two objects on either side. But it's modified in the sense that only one of the objects is hanging out and hanging in space, and that's going to be block B as I've labeled it. Block A is on a horizontal surface. Now, a modified Atwood machine could also be a surface that's angled at some other angle than flat like this. But we're going to be responsible for this one right here where it's flat, horizontal. So block A is not in space. It's going to slide on a horizontal surface. I have made that horizontal surface frictionless. Block A has a mass of 5 kilograms, block B has a mass of 2 kilograms. First thing is to draw a force diagram for each block. For block A, block A has weight. Its weight is 5 times 9.8 is 49 newtons. And the normal force of the surface acting up on block A is going to be 49 newtons. Also, because it's a horizontal surface, net force in the y-axis is zero of block A. Um, so the weight equals the normal force in this case. So that's 49 newtons. And then the other force acting on block A, of course, is the tension, pulling it to the right. Because when I release this, A will slide to the right and B is going to go down. So there's tension acting to the right on block A. For block B, block B of course has gravity pulling down, but it's only, it only has a mass of 2 kilograms, so it's, therefore its weight is only 2 times 9.8 is 19.6 newtons. So, for block B, its weight is 19.6 newtons. There's tension pulling up on block B because, of course, the string is right here. Although block B is going to go downwards, accelerate downwards when you release it, it's not in free fall. So there's tension here and here. Tension pulling up on B. Tension pulling to the right on A. That tension should be less than the weight of B. That's why B is going to accelerate downwards, because its weight is greater than the tension. Now, we are going to assume, as we have all along, that the string has negligible mass relative to the two masses, block A and block B. And also, we're going to assume that we have a frictionless pulley, at least negligible friction, and negligible mass, the pulley. So the pulley is important because it allows the string to change direction without getting caught up on the side. It, it reduces the friction to nearly zero. So we need the pulley, but then we get to ignore it in terms of its mass and its weight, and, it, it's, um, and the fact that there's friction. Okay, so B is going to accelerate downwards because its weight's greater than the tension, and you, can, you know that's going to happen. Um, A is going to accelerate to the right because the tension pulls block A to the right. The normal force and the weight of A do not play a role in this because A is accelerating perpendicular to the normal force and the weight of A. Now, because there's no friction acting, ac acting back on block A, because there's no friction acting back on block A, and the fact that if we look at the entire system, then the tension that connects B to A is an internal force, internal to the system. The only unbalanced force, remember that these two forces balance each other out, the only unbalanced force is the weight of B. So to find the acceleration of the entire system, not just block B, but the entire system, that's everything that accelerates. You look at what's unbalanced. The only one that's unbalanced is, is the weight of B. Again, the, the tension for the entire system is internal to the system, and these two forces don't participate in the system moving in the direction it's going to move, which is that way. Right? A to the right and B down when you let go of it. 
So the net force is equal to the weight of B only. Again, if there were friction present, we would have subtracted out the friction acting on block A. There is no friction acting on block B because it's not sliding. It's in the air. So if there were friction, I would have subtracted it right here, and it would act on block A only. But I said it's frictionless. So the net force is just 19.6 newtons. Now acceleration equals net force over mass. But this is acceleration of the entire system, not just block B. This acceleration of the entire system. So that's 19.6 newtons. It's the net force acting on the whole system divided by the mass of the whole system. Again, not just block B, not just block B, not just block B. That's 2 plus 5 is 7 kilograms. And 19.6 divided by 7 is, let me calculate this out. I didn't calculate it beforehand. So 19.6 divided by 7 is 2.8 meters per second squared. There is the acceleration of this system. So we know that A is going to accelerate to the right at 2.8 meters per second squared, and B is going to accelerate downwards at 2.8 meters per second squared, because they're all tied together as a single system. 